Before we start writing some pseudocode, today we're going to look at this concept of control structures. Exactly what does that mean? So here we have unstructured code. It was known since the 60s as spaghetti code. And you can see what a mess it is here in the flowchart. So the flowchart allows you to see that depending on your input, you may go many, many ways. And this is just a very simple example, but it was very common to write what we call spaghetti code when coding was really starting in the 50s and 60s. And one of the computer scientists named Edgar Dijkstra wrote about this and said the solution was this concept of structured programming. In about 1963-1964, Bohm and Jacopini, some mathematicians, came up with a structure theorem. So they did a mathematical proof that three basic structures were what you needed in programming and could do programming without all the go-tos that were causing the spaghetti code. These structures are sequence, decision, and loop. And over the next few weeks, what we're going to do is take one control structure at a time and focus on writing a program and pseudocode using these control structures, trying to get an understanding. The symbol is the sequence. I think decision statements, you've been doing it in your life the whole time. Controlling the loops, a little bit more complex, but uh, they're all easy to master. So here is a flow chart of sequence. So sequence just does not mean the instruction, because sometimes it, all you need to know is three basic control structures. But this, it's not the instruction, it's the flow of instructions that we're talking about. So the flow chart shows you, you just do step one, do step two, do step three, do step four. It's the most basic structure. The sequence structure uh, example here, let me just do steps getting up in the morning. Here is the previous version of App Inventor. Uh, the button is clicked, we're going to play a sound, and we're going to vibrate in sequence. The decision structure means sometimes there's things you want to do or don't want to do depending on the case or in programming the input. So the, in flow charting this symbol means there's going to be a decision. What normally goes in this symbol is a Boolean expression. As you know, the results of the Boolean expression is true or false. So the zeros and ones we were talking about in chapter four in programming are now trues and false. And it really doesn't matter whether you go left or right with the true or false. Personally, I like to go right in my flow chart, but in the programming, when you actually get to programming, there, there is no flow chart, so it doesn't matter. So if you go true, if this expression is true, you will execute everything on the left side. Now in this case, we're only seeing the one instruction, but there could be many instructions over here on the true side and many instructions on the false side. And so here is what it may look like in pseudocode. So if some Boolean, it says condition here, but it means Boolean expression. If this is true, then we're going to do process A, else we'll do process B. And you've already done this in App Inventor. Sometimes you only need to do one process. If the car needs gas, then get gas. And there's nothing on the else part. Okay, so this is what uh, that flow chart would look. See, the else part, no instructions are being executed. So you're only doing something if, if it's true, if the condition is true. Okay. If weather equals raining, then wear boots, else wear sandals, and if. So looping is also called repetition or iteration. And once again, notice in the flowchart we had the diamond. In the diamond, you will notice you always have one flow into the diamond, two flows out of the diamond and there will be a Boolean expression. The result of the Boolean expression is always true or false. So if the result is true, notice you're going to execute, in this case there's only one instruction but there could be many instructions, and then you're going to come around back to the Boolean expression. 
and you repeat it. Well, is it still true? And if it is, you can repeat it. Is it still true? If it is, you repeat those set of instructions. So let me give you an example. Suppose I create a payroll application. If I have 45 employees, wouldn't I want to repeat this 45 times and produce 45 checks? So that is an example of looping. As soon as I get to count of 46, I don't want to repeat it anymore. I don't have any more paychecks to process. So it goes through the false and then whatever statements are down here, this is only a partial flow chart, we'll start executing. In App Inventor, you haven't done a loop yet. But here's an example of a simple sequence. So have you ever sent a text message out to a big group? Suppose you could write this in simple sequence and it would go to the first number, go to the second. Could you imagine if there's 30? You would have to have 30 instructions here or actually 60, okay? So first you gotta grab the number, then you gotta send it to that number. Grab the next number, send it. You get the idea. This is sequence. And it would be very long if I had to send 30 messages out. Here, instead, we're gonna make a list of the numbers, and then we're gonna do a for loop. And notice that whether there are three or whether there is 100, this is all the instructions you need inside of the loop. In a sequence, if there were three, this would be six instructions here. And if there were 100, that would need to be 200. So the advantage of for loops is you really don't have to know ahead of time how many phone numbers, for example, you'll be sending the message to. And most programmers don't know that, correct? If you had to write that in sequence, you would have to keep making a decision. Is there another number? And how many times will you do it? What do you think? Well, 100 is enough, and then someone does 150. So, yeah, you really do need loops. Okay, here are the three basic structures, flowchart. So sequence, the arrow just flows straight through. The decision, notice that the selection is also called the decision. Notice that you have an arrow coming in to some Boolean expression, true or false, and then you will branch. Eventually, what happens when you're done the true side and the false side? It wraps back up, okay? It always comes back together to a single flow. Everything always comes back to sequence. So you might temporarily branch out, but you can always come back to sequence. Again, here's the loop. Okay, one arrow in, two arrows out, one arrow in, two arrows out. Here is the loop, but it always comes back to single flow. Okay, and here are the pseudocode examples. Earlier, we had this flow chart that was spaghetti code, and we were coming back and forth. Here is an example of the same flow chart. If you have a certain test score and a certain class rank, you're going to be accepted to college admission. And notice how easy this is to flow through, okay? So 